Rotor said that it is either within yourself which is internal or external. Now external can lead to a scenario of learned helplessness. What does learned helplessness mean? It is a state where person experiences failure. So let's say this dog when is trying to cross this bar is given electric shock. Now this happens twice or thrice or four times. What would happen the next time? The dog would not even give it a try, would not will be willing to repeat the task with the fear of getting a shock. So it is learned helplessness. The state which has occurred because the person has experienced that situation repeatedly. Every time the dog was trying to cross it, the dog was getting a shock. So now that dog has learned through repeated behavior that if I cross, I'll get a shock. So dog would not at all give it a chance, would not at all give it a try, even if you force the dog to do so. So that is called as learned helplessness. Now external locus of control can lead to a state of learned helplessness where you don't understand that your life is controlled by external stimuli or external factors around you. You start to blame the external factors for uh, the loss and for the people with external locus of control everything is blamed on circumstance this happened because the circumstance was so and so things were out of my control so out of my control is the key basis that you decide and therefore you say that the action have been governed by others in my life it's not because of me now this kind of person usually tends to be more stressed in life and usually tend to be more depressive in life clear <clears throat> the next is internal locus what is internal locus the person believes that i own my life i contribute towards my life so i take the judgments and the call for my life now if anything fails in my life that means i am responsible for the same thing i and i need to hold the responsibility for the same thing so those with internal locus of control usually have high achievement uh, motivation so they have high achievement motivation and they have low out directedness so they are not directed outwards so they have low out directedness and higher level of achievement motivation because they feel that everything is within themselves they are ready to accept the consequences that can run through and they are ready to take all the failures all the blames onto themselves so let's say i fail in the examination i'm ready to take the failure that yes i did not work hard so that would give me a positive motivation to work hard however when it is an external locus that would be a state of learned helplessness i did not perform well in the examination so what would happen i would say oh i did not perform well in the examination so probably i was not the right person uh, the next coming exams also i won't be able to perform well and if by chance it happens that for the next one or two examinations i was not able to perform well it could lead to a state of learned helplessness where i would probably give up saying that uh, i I am not the right person, I am not the right fit for it and probably I am not meant for it. Okay, So external locus of control can lead to a stressed behavior, it can lead to a depressive disorder. Internal locus of control usually helps you ascertain your failures. You are taking your own responsibility so it increases your achievement motivation and you are less out directed you are more indirected you know what is correct what is not so the major contribution of this theory is you understand the process of behavior the cognition or the uh, basic which lies behind your behavior and this gives you an elaborate view of the personality and these researchers researches are much more objective in nature however the major criticism of a social cognitive approach is that it does not understand the biological unconscious and emotional factors and it does not have a detailed exact nature of the personality development that can be seen so those are two important criticisms that can be seen 
for the uh, uh, the social cognitive approach i repeat again the benefit of this approach is that you have a clear vision about why do you behave in a certain way you understand it is because i have the things within me or i am blaming the things around me so where is my locus of control so the personality's viewpoint is expanded and you think more objectively you are able to understand this is right this is wrong this is how the thing should be this is how the thing should not be however when i talk about criticisms you understand that it does not have a detailed exact nature of personality development and it does not recognize the role of uh, emotional factors or it does not recognize the role of unconsciousness or biological factors